had to take that breath out right there because I think I had, um, I'm excited. I'm in an excited mode here. I get a chance to literally play with someone who uh, I was just telling him before we got on this call. Uh, whenever I think about play or every, every time I lean into playing as an adult, I think about this gentleman. We're going to be talking to Zach Klein in a bit here, and he has quite an extensive background in play. It's been a while since the last time that we connected. So I say this here and, I, and I'm excited just knowing that play can live. But I also want to make sure I say this so that I can let that go and remove myself from any kind of expectation. We're in this conversation here as two people who are on a journey. And the journey that I'm most interested in right now is the uncharted journey. So the journeys where we, where, where we don't know where our next steps are. And I've been, having, I've been exploring for myself where are the places that I've been settling uh, as a settler in life? And where are the places where it's like the wild west and there's tons of opportunity, both within myself and externally? I'm playing a lot right now on Clubhouse uh, and I'm loving Clubhouse. Um, the time of this recording, it's pretty new. I've only been on it for 10 days. When you watch this, I might, I might, be, uh, I might be one of the, em one of the emperors of, of that platform. But I, I love it because it's like, there's this feeling that who knows what this is going to be. And I can wait and see what other people make of it. Or I can get on there right now and start doing my thing in the way that I do it and bring people to experience me in that way. Such that here goes, here goes the goal I haven't told anyone publicly, but my goal is to be one of the, one of the people that that organization calls when they're looking at where they're taking the, the platform in the future to be so influential as a, a moderator and organizer of conversations in Clubhouse is, you know, it's an audio drop, drop in um, app. I'm not, I, I don't have any stock in it. So <laughs> it's just something that's just like real for me right now. And I'm finding myself, I'm playing on there. There's, there's times where I'm, I'm coaching people, I'm having conversations, but I'm also a participate in, in a number of different things that have gotten me out of my comfort zone and have allowed me to explore uncharted journeys uh, as well. Journeys around my masculinity, journeys around play in particular, sex, journeys around different uh, racial and equity elements that are taking place in the world. And also journeys around uh, actually expressing myself in new ways to new people uh, in an environment where I think that there's a, I know that there's all that there is is opportunity. And at the same time, it feels like there's best practices or a way that it should be done. And I get a chance to, to, to really play in that space and say, actually, nothing's been written here. Nothing's been written. We just have a tool and it's how we choose to leverage this tool that's gonna make other people decide how they want to continue building it. So I'm in that place right now of, of recognizing that I, that I harness power and acknowledge in one place where I'm walking myself through a journey that's uncharted. But note here, note that this is not a thing that's happening to me or a thing where I'm waiting to see what comes out later. Instead, as I go down this journey here, I'm looking to be so influential that they end up carving the path for me. I'm a trailblazer for a reason. And sometimes I'm the one that, that's carving the path. And others, we create such a big ripple that the path has to move in order to accommodate you. Saying that just sounds fun. I'm like, and I know, and I know the truth in that. You might know the truth for yourself as well. So let's bring, let's, uh, let's come together here in this conversation, Zach. Um, I'm really interested in these, these experiences of navigating what might be the wild west for us. Uh, really interested in these experiences where we might be stepping out of what has been established and rather than settling for whatever we find, we are taking our own account and ownership to create from there. So I love to, um, and I'm not tied to where this goes here, if it goes anywhere at all. But I'd love to just, just connect this in with you on, on your journey, right? And to see, get a, get a chance to like, see where is Zach now? Where is he headed? Zach, um, what's, the, what's the opportunity that lies ahead of you that is more or less like the Wild West, where you can create and actually have a say in what, comes forward? What's the opportunity that lies ahead of you right now? 
Yeah, thanks, Niyama. Thank you for having me. Um, super grateful to be a part of this. Yeah. Um, you once asked me the question, Zach, do you want to create a garden from which to pick from? Or um, do you want to be uh, a forager out in the wild? And at the time, my response was, I want to be a forager. Uh, and we were talking about communities and, and ways of building communities and ways of building business. And um, I had this notion that I wanted to be uh, the, the, the go-to guy for uh, being able to coach super high-level creatives and to help them get their shit together, organize their lives, um, have breakthrough moments, be able to make their best work and essentially be unobstructed self-expressors. Uh, and that's still a desire of mine, but the, the opportunity that I'm seeing right now is I can go after that and I can also build a community of badass creatives at the same time. And that's what's in front of me right now. And that's what I'm most passionate and excited about. I can I can feel that like there was like a charge. It was like yeah. it, there there was there was a, a a certain place, and I I could I could I also felt just so you know like I felt how solid you were with like 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 look I can build this like this is happening like when you were saying this yeah I was like I was like oh he knows his people he knows where the values are, are he's got that that's solid you know and you can build that I feel that and then there was just like this infusion of L, uh, when you're like badass creatives what does badass mean for you i, lo I love that because people like it, it means different things to different people so like when you say when you say badass like like what what is it that makes you come to life on that yeah it's so cool that you asked me that because uh i'm i'm working on a manifesto mm -hmm. for the creative community that i'm building mm -hmm. and it essentially is uh describing the kind of people who i am attracting um and for one thing, I gotta say, I love the work of Jen Sincero, who wrote the I'm a I'm a I'm a badass mm -hmm. books, right? Mm -hmm. I, I I love her tone and what she does, but I'm a little jealous that she already, in a sense, co-opted the term badass, because I love that term so much. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying I can't do it in my own way, but uh, I wanna put that out there. Um, so uh, a creative badass is somebody who um, is not only at the top of their game as a creative professionally um, and in terms of being able to, to generate flow states in creativity, but they're also a conscious human being who is actively working on their personal development and their evolution as, as a human and sees that as part and parcel connected with their creative work. So um, an example would be um, a, a human being, and, and I, I've, used, I've used this example with you before um, because this, this is one of my heroes, David Byrne, who uh, was the, the lead singer of the Talking Heads and has his own musical projects uh, and has been being creative in all kinds of disciplines from the beginning of his career uh, as a teenager. Um, he is somebody who, in my view, and I don't know him personally, and I will know him personally one day, um, is actively seeking to expand who he is, who um, admits when he makes mistakes, who I believe is willing to look at his shadow side and to um, bring that into the light and to integrate some of the darker parts of himself um, and doesn't separate that personal growth and development from his creative activities. And that to me is sort of the underlying, like we can't get any deeper than that creative badass definition. Hmm. 
Thank you for that, Zach. I'm, as I'm, I'm sitting here, and, and as you're talking, I'm, I'm allowing myself to listen with my body. So I'm, I'm listening for when does the energy come alive? When, like, what am I feeling in different parts of my body and so forth? And um, the, the question that comes to me intuitively here is like, right now in this moment, how, like, how is your badassery? in this conversation. This is not even in the context of life. I just wanna know in this moment, in this area, how's your badassery per your own definition? It might be a scale of one to 10, you could be whatever, however it is, but just let me get, let me get a sense of that. Mm. I'm, uh, I'm at a on, a, on the scale of badass, which I'm totally using that in the future. Thank you. Uh, I'm at a, I'm at a, uh, I'm at an eight right now, maybe an 8.5. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a lot of factors involved. One of them is I got a great night's sleep. I was listening to um, another creative uh, connector who I respect deeply, Chase Jarvis, who wrote a book called Creative Calling and has a podcast and all the, all the stuff, right? And he, was, he basically listed out all the things he needs in this podcast that I was listening to this morning around... Uh, what he needs to be his best creative self. Can you hear me? Can you hear me here? Oh, we 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 just broke up. We broke Shoot. up for for. Yeah. Okay, we're still breaking up. So okay. Um, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. I can't. Your video's frozen. Hello. Here. Cool. All right. So Zach, it looked like uh, we had some uh, connectivity issues there, and I want to, I want to, I want to drop us into wherever will be exactly what we need. I'm like, all right. My thing is when things happen with technology, I like to think about like what is the actual thing. Where else for me and you out of connection? So I'm being, taking a breath in, bringing ourselves back to a little bit more connection, a little more presence here. Um, you were telling me about your, like on a scale of badass, like there were some components there. I want, I want to get a chance to see a little bit into that world. Tell me, tell me about it. Sure. Um, so yeah, on the scale of badass, I'm at an 8.5 right now. And that's, I would say in my life, that's an average. Um, so things are going well. And that hasn't always been the case, uh, in times that we've talked. Mm -hmm. So I'm celebrating this period of expansion. Um, there's a number of reasons around why I'm at an 8.5. Um, and some of them are directly related to like how well I treat my body, my diet, uh, my sleep, um, the fundamentals of being a human creature, the basics, um, the fact that I live in the mountains at a mile high and I breathe fresh, clean air, and I go and I exercise on a daily basis, right? All that stuff is, is, is important. Uh, but I'm also at an 8.5 because um, I'm at a place in my career, in my life, where I am more confident than I've ever been about what I'm capable of creating and how I'm capable of serving the people who I care most about. I'm, uh, I'm appreciative uh, before the internet connection went out, you're talking about like, you're like, I'm getting a lot of sleep. I had a great night's yeah. sleep. You know, yeah. uh, I love that. I, I, as soon as you said I had a great night's sleep, the connection went off and, and it might've been on me. Cause I was like, wow, like what powerful thought leadership around, like is going to come out of this here. Like, like the, like the, the, the elements of like what actually the, 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 some of the factors involved where most people may not be thinking about when they think about being a badass creative, they may not be thinking it, it, to me, when I think about like creatives that, that are out there creating badassery, it'd be like, okay, well, you know, we're burning the midnight oil and we're like, we're working as much as we can on both ends. And like, it, it like, I'm just, I'm sacrificing myself for, for the art of, for my creativity. I'm thinking about even myself as a creative, my creative is not the art of in the physical world. It's uh, the art of, of conversations, you know? Uh, and so there's, there was just something that was really counterintuitive to an extent, but at the same time, as soon as you said it, I'm like, 
of course, like, how can you, how can you possibly do your best work if you're not even being able to show up fully, uh, if you're not even able to show up, but like, regardless of the, <laughs> the levels there, like, so I would just like, just, just call that out there where if, if there's elements in this that also feel like, um, a bit of a, a bit of some some miles milestones or some guideposts uh, along along the way of like what actually can take you down uh, that badassery path as opposed to be simply creating. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, side tangent: mm -hmm. another practice that I do around badassery is um, very simple, and that is. I put my hair into a samurai bun. And it sounds a little silly, but just the act of putting my hair up into that space actually changes my physiology and sharpens my mind at the times when I need it the most. Like right now, I feel like I'm in a completely different space than right before I did that. Um, so I just Lovely. say that to say that there are practices that are so simple and easy for leaders and trail trailblazers and badass creatives to participate in, uh, that can be state shift changes that can create dramatic shifts in our physiology and our brain chemistry, um, to help us accomplish what we know we're supposed to accomplish. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. This is my whole goal with this here was was two was two parts. One, I wanted to. That's really important to me. So I wanted to see your world, and that, that's really important to me. I think just gonna call it out, out like I'll wait it out. Me and you are here. We're good. Um, the other thing here is that like when it comes to the uncharted portion of the journey, I'm really looking for us to be able to be in a space where we can get to what you already know and then go beyond. So I'm glad that you put the the hair up in the samurai bun. There. Let me check in with you. Can you hear me? It's crackly and uh, goes off and on, but I'm following what you're saying. Okay, I want to do more than just follow, so I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it just a. We're going to continue for just a bit, but if I don't see it improve, I'm going to call in from my phone and we'll continue from there. Sounds good. I'm also open to turning video off on Zoom if that helps. I've lost you completely, if you can hear me. I'm going to try to uh, silence that here and see if that works. Yeah, go, go ahead. Yeah, we are, we're navigating this here in real time here. And I think that this is the parts that uh, I like to keep this part, these parts in because this is just, this is just real. Um, and, and being able to let that for some person, this is, this would be a very meaningful thing to say like, okay, how do we continue moving forward? Even when it looks like technology is mm -hmm. working against us. Right. So I just want to keep ahead. going. I, I'm, not, I'm now using my more lo-fi, um, uh, system just so we can just stay in conversation and we don't have to lose the flow of our conversation even if the recording gets gets jacked up all right totally that's cool awesome. so let's do this here like let's let's assume that everything we were talking about is great dandy it was awesome 
the world was like, this is not why you are connected. This is not <laughs> where you're here to, like, like, like the path that you're going down is not, is not it, right? Um, yeah. If this was going to be, let's just go straight to it. Let's go straight to the heart. If this was going to be a life-changing conversation, if we were going to be in the space where like this conversation was just, just exceeded your expectation or even exceeded your own desires, what would we need to talk about to have that conversation, Zach? Yeah, I know what that is. Um, and I love your reframe around the, around the universe saying, this is not the direction the conversation should be going. Um, so going back to the very beginning of this call before you started recording, um, we were laughing and joking about um, Zoom backgrounds. And um, you had asked, you, you had guessed, you had asked, is that a real Zoom background? Is that a real background or is that a Zoom background, a virtual background? And uh, I had asked for you to guess and you guessed wrong because and I'll, in case there's visuals, yeah. I'm going to move it around and, and show. I'm at a cabin in the woods. It's a gorgeous location. It's a real background. And we, we started talking about those transitional moments in human history in which um, human beings start to experience a, a new level of perception, usually generated by technology. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to have that conversation, but I want to add the larger schema to that, which is we're in a huge, huge fucking transition right now in all senses mm -hmm of that word and it's not just perceptual it's not just technological it's uh it's i'm here ground I, I, i've been here so keep going cool it's um it's it's uh our entire life is being turned upside down you know whether we realize it or not that's my judgment and we have some options we can hide out until things return to normal, which they won't. Um, or we can step up and be the creative badasses and the trailblazers and the outliers uh, like your community who are choosing to take action and to create the world that follows the one that's being destroyed at the moment. That's what I'm fucking passionate about. I'm passionate about creatives who take the, 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 the future of our planet and humanity into their own hands who don't wallow in the despair and hopelessness of what's happening in the world, but instead say, I see what's going on and I recognize that, that this shit's getting real and that it's difficult for a lot of people and I might be very privileged in the space where I find myself, but I'm going to use that as tools for transformation and moving us in another direction. Thank you, Zach. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling you right here. I'm really feeling you here. Let me ask you this. As you were talking, I'm like, okay, there's alignment. There's, there's, there are elements that are in place here. And I'm, and I'm glad that you're calling out exactly what it is that, that you're looking for and, where, and where, we should, where we should really be playing. What scares you the most about pursuing this? I'm gonna let that question just settle for a second. Hmm. What scares me the most about stepping into leadership in a space like this and, and supporting people who are badass creatives to be visionaries and to create the next world is that I will be called out for doing something the wrong way and my shadows will be shown to the world before I have a chance to see them myself and um, that I will be ostracized and um, uh, crucified for uh, something that I don't even realize that I'm doing. 
Um, I'm, a, I'm afraid of being kicked out of communities that I want to be a part of because I said something in the heat of the moment or I wasn't PC enough or, you know, whatever it might be, like my privileged hetero white male ass um, is taken to town for being who I am and saying what I say. That's, that's what I'm afraid of. Thanks for that. What, what, what scares you about that? And I, and I have to ask that in the sense of like, uh, some, some people might be exactly looking for that experience. So, so what, what, do, what scares you about that? Yeah, well, th thank you. Some people might be looking for that experience. And actually, I think a part of me is looking for that experience, honestly. Uh, because I know that it, it wouldn't be, if that happened to me, that because I'm a human being who's interested in transforming and becoming a better person, I would take it in, the parts that were true, and I would look at that, and I would come out on the other end saying, I want to I wanna do this better. I want to be better at this. Um, so yes, I, I actually welcome that experience. It wouldn't be a, t it wouldn't be a totalitarian, Zach is banned from the internet and can no longer participate in a community. I wouldn't want to be a part of a community that did that. That doesn't make any sense. That's not what a community should be doing. A community should be calling people out, but also compassionately doing so in order to uh, further the evolution of the members of the community. But going back to the shadow side, right? Like what I'm actually afraid of is on the deepest level that what people say about me on the internet and what people um, think about me is actually true, oh, right? Oh. That, that someone's going to say, uh, for instance, like Zach, you're, uh, you're a misogynist, racist, homophobic asshole. And uh, that that'll actually be like a deep truth and a part of who I am. And that I will not have seen that until somebody calls that out. Right. And, um, and going even deeper that if that's true, then it just basically means that I'm a terrible person and I don't have anything to contribute to the world. Right. Mm -hmm. There's an exercise that I do with my clients where I will ask them the question, um, so if that's true for you, what else is true, right? What else is true about you? Like, what's the deeper fear, essentially? Mm -hmm. Like, and I want to get to the deepest fear that a person has, because usually that's the piece that's driving all of these other fears that are masked as fears, right? And we started to do that process with me right now. It's like, I'm not actually afraid of being called out. I'm not actually being afraid of ostracized. I'm actually afraid that I'm a bad person at the core. <laughs> and usually that's like the deepest fear of, of any human being. You know, there, there's something in there that really rings as like, this thing that feels really true in there. And then there's also something in there that even as like with all the breakouts in the, in the internet and everything like here, keeps coming up as almost like a part of a writer that's along this that's along with this here, like if on one level I'm listening to you and I want to be like, you know, because I'm like coach, I'd be like, aha, at the end of the day, at the deepest level, like this is where it comes out. But there's an element of this that um, that I get really curious about. And I love to explore with you on, on this part because it feels tangential, but it's like also feels attached as a sidecar. Um, and it's just this line, and I wouldn't know about it. It's like, it's as if like, if, if I'm really hearing what you're saying, you're like, look, because look, I'll, I'll just say this to myself. A lot, like a lot of people are like, I'm afraid of being, like people calling me a racist. I'm like, oh, just so you know, I'm racist. Like, I know I'm racist. Like, I can't help but be racist. I don't act on my racism in that same way. But like, I know that it's there to, 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 to claim that it isn't is, is preposterous. We're all racist in our own different ways. And I, I'm most scared of the people who say that they're not. I'm like, oh, you just don't have any awareness. You and and you're going to do something thinking that you are being holistic and you're going to actually cause harm to me, right? That that scares me. 
so there's an element of what you've been saying where it's like, let's say all those things are actually like, well, let's say this. It wasn't, let's say all those things. It was, people might say this about me and those things, and I might not even know until that time. And then it'd be true. And so it was, so that was, that was curious to me because it, it, it feels different than like, because the, the path you told me, the path you took me down was, if these things were true about me, then I may not be a good person. Not that, but it felt less, that writer uh, attached to it felt different. Like, it's almost like if you knew right now that you're misogynistic and all this other stuff like that and xenophobic, you'd be like, cool, at least I know it. And like, if someone says it, I know it to be true, you know, or I know about it in some way. And that, but I didn't get that that would lead you to feel that you're a bad person, right? It felt like there was just that rider, that sidecar has has weight to it because you brought it up minutes ago and then you brought it up again when you had a chance to just refresh into it. You're like, and I wouldn't even know it. Tell me more about that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, yeah, I am a racist. Uh, I am homophobic. Uh, I am misogynist. Um, all of those things are true and, and it's not a black and white, like it's a spectrum. It's a, uh, it's, it's a spectrum of, of awareness of my own unconscious biases that are at a very primal survival level. Right. Um, there's a amazing, uh, black author and healer whose name I am not going to remember, but who wrote a book called My Grandmother's Hands. And he talks about um, racialized trauma uh, and the ways that black bodies and white bodies and police bodies respond to one another and respond on a very instinctual level, especially in the United States. And I've been reading that and, and, and really thinking about the, the, the ways that my body reacts when I uh, come in contact with bodies that are not like my own. And it's a, it's a self-protective, instinctual, biological, somatic reaction, right? And the same can be true of people who have a sexuality that's different than mine uh, and, and people who have a gender that's different than mine, right? So, um, I, I admit that, yes, I am already those things. Um, as we dive deeper, what I don't want to feel is that sinking feeling in my body that I did something wrong and someone else thinks lesser of me. It's very much for me, and I think most humans attached to this feeling of being a little kid who just made a mistake. And that's what I don't, that, it's so funny to vocalize this because when like, if I, if I were to say that's my deepest fear, that's, I, I, I'm, I'm going to say this out loud and kind of feel if that's true for me. My deepest fear is the sinking feeling that someone thinks lesser of me. Uh, or let's take someone else out of the picture. My deepest fear is the sensations that feel childlike, that I'm not enough and I made a mistake. <laughs> It's there's power in saying that out loud because uh, that's my deepest fear. But on a body level, like that's what I'm protecting myself from. That's essentially the feeling that's with that's within my own space that is that could be triggered by people on the internet saying shit about me. Oh. Yeah. I, I appreciate you, Zach. I, I appreciate you bringing in the depth and choosing to go down to these levels of depth within yourself, right? And to, and to go through, go through your, the process of uh, in real time with me. Um, 
you know, you said the childlike element. And, uh, I'll be honest. We talked again about play earlier. Childlike is something I've learned to embrace. Childlike is different than childish. And I would, and I'll be very curious if, if there is, and you don't have to answer in this space here, but you can just check in with your body and such around it. If there is a distinction for you that, that lies within it, where uh, in, in this context here of, uh, of childish versus childlike, but there's, there's an element here that I want to take this in a different direction here as we, as we start to wrap up for today's conversation. I acknowledge you. I acknowledge you for, I acknowledge you for you like finding your shadows and stepping into it and calling, calling yourself in, not rather than calling yourself out, you know, and really call it in who you are and owning up to the parts of you that is not what, that is not um, idealistic, but it is you like, that that's not that felt powerful to me i just want to just let you know on my end here i was i was like um, zach's really like gone through he's doing this he's here he's here with intention there's a part of me that wants to go and say like okay how can we like remove that for you and i'll be like feel 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 all that stuff the other part of me is like gosh i i cannot wait for this to happen for you for the internet to, for, the, for you to be out in the world so powerfully, so visibly, to be making such an impact that the internet actually notices. Because it is hard to get noticed, one, right? So like, so like, so I'm like, man, I cannot wait for him to have that pro- problem because for all, everyone that's saying that about him, the, the number of lives that he's changing out there must be tenfold, right? So that that's one. Like like for me, I I'm sitting here on your team saying like like I would want to come out and be like like how many people called you out for some of this stuff? Oh, no one called you out. You haven't gone far enough yet. You ever no one's called you out yet. You haven't gone far. And I'm not saying that that doesn't take away from like the 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 crappiness, you know, of of being being uh, of someone coming at you like that, you know. But it's but I can tell you through this experience of of, of you. And the way in which you, the integrity in which you are bringing to this here, that I, I would much rather support you in the, hey, I keep getting called out for this and, and support you in that space of, of growing the capacity to be called out um, versus to try and, and help you remove that or take you out of situations where that to life i want to be upfront with you on it i care too much about you and what you're doing i believe too much in what you're doing to like to remove what could be an amazing tool and amazing amazing support there's one other place i want to go with this here uh beforehand but let me just pause real quick when i say that to you i can see you smiling i can see you nodding but i'm curious about what's happening within your body what's happening inside of you in my body i'm excited there's truth what i call truth responses which is just energy moving, saying yes to what you're saying. Um, hell yeah, I want to get called out. Hell yeah, I want to I want to get the attention of the internet and make an impact. And you're absolutely correct. If if I'm getting called out, then it's ten, a hundred, a thousand times fold more um, other people that are getting positively impacted. And that's the direction I want to move. Um, my ego can die a million deaths and uh, it will be in service of sharpening my skills uh, as a healer and as a creative and um, it'll be more than worth it so let's let's continue down this track for just a little bit here um, look I have an invitation for you just similar to how you showed up in this conversation with the depth and this to me is the real visibility work, right? Like being seen in one way is actually quite simple. You can pay for ads, you can make things, you can write. There's ways to be seen, but to be truly seen is like is not something most people get a chance to uh, to experience, or most people are willing to put out there. And as you were talking and you're expressing this, what was coming to my mind was, I can only imagine how real creative badasses, like the real difference between them being a creative that, that wants to do good in the world, you know, versus the creative that is actually changing and shaping 
uh, the, the, the future of humanity. This is a little bit of my word. I'm sorry, I'm not using yours exactly, but uh, there's, there's alignment in both of our missions. Uh, how many of them, how often would it be that the same shadow that you're experiencing is the thing that's keeping them from really bringing their work to life in, in, what, in a way that it really could, could be impactful? And so my invitation is like, as you're doing this work, please keep letting this part out as well. Let this part be visible because this is, it's not the creative part. They're creative. You know, they, like that part, they're, they're good. The badassery in it, to the level that you're saying, you know, to the level of actually helping to like uh, shift and, and augment and support this, this, the new humanity that's emerging here. That, like what you're what you're describing right here, like that to me is the part that like that's the journey that 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 very few people can actually go along with them on. And I want to just I really want to call that out um, as, as you're doing as you are going through this year. It's part of the reason why like I'm not trying to remove anything from you here because it's like like you will have you will you will have your versions of this of this shadow show up as you continue to go further and further down or have more and more and more impact. And it will show up in different ways, but I like, I just want to make sure we're, that we're calling out like the, the value in this shadow and then shining a light on it without actually having to completely eradicate it because there is, there is to me, it is part of the compass of knowing that you are heading down in the right, in the truly impactful direction. So let me pause with you there, and, and um, I'd love to just get some some share with me your insight. I, I like it's a part of me that's like I hope I'm not circumventing the shadow of this here. Like I hope I'm not like like letting them off the hook or anything like that. But there's an element of this here where it's like okay, like can you dance in the dark now? You know, can you dance with like in the shadow of it without having to do anything else with it uh, from that place? So, so share with me your greatest insight. Share with me what, what's coming up, what's on your heart, what's what's coming out of your body. Uh, we'll use that and then we'll, we'll wrap up this conversation. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Uh, fully agree with what you're saying. Um, uh, to to give a, an analogy or a metaphor, um, I've been a, I've been involved in um, hardcore men's work for ten years. Men's work being um, focused work on that, that is done exclusively in men's circles that is about uh, emotional literacy, mentorship, uh, deep connection and vulnerability and intimacy between men in healthy ways. And um, I believe deeply in this work because I see the lack of spaces for men to be able to connect on these levels culturally, everywhere in Western culture at least and, and probably beyond. Now, um, I started my journey in a group called the Mankind Project, um, MKP, and it's been tremendously valuable for me. But the one, uh, the one criticism I have for Mankind Project and, and many men that I see in that space is that uh, Mankind Project teaches men how to dive deeply into their emotional lives and to feel the shit that they haven't allowed themselves to feel in healthy ways and to express that and to look at the shadow, right? And to bring the shadows to the light, to play with shadow. It's all about shadow work. Incredibly powerful step in a human being's journey to begin that work. Uh, particularly if they've never done anything like that before. Where I find the shortcomings are that oftentimes men in, the, in MKP will stay in a stage of development well, that my mentor once called playing in the poopy, right? Playing in the shadow work, playing in the space uh, of just like, Ugh, I'm such a terrible person and all these shadows and, and not evolving and moving beyond that. And so when you speak to me of, uh, of, of, of this, of like, can you, can you dance with the shadows and also continue expanding is my interpretation of what oh. you're inviting me to do. I say, fuck yes. Uh, I don't wanna stay playing with the poopy. 
Uh, I want to look at my shadows just as I look at the reality of the planet in which we live and the, and the garbage and the problems, but I want to move beyond that. And I want people in my community to move beyond that. So the answer is yes. Yes, I will and can. I, I, I feel you care. And I'm really grateful for this. I'm grateful that, that you, that you're calling out the shadows that you, that you see the poopy, you're playing in the poopy, you're doing with it all, whatever it needs to be done with it. And then you're also you, like, letting like being like, and even if I'm covered in a poopy and I know that I'm covered in a poopy, this work still needs to get done. And if you come join me, you might be covered in poopy too. It might be different, whatever it is, but like there, there's, there's there. I really respect you that. I really respect you, and I'm, I'm I'm deeply deeply invested in the success of, of you bringing out um, just your badassery of bringing out like just helping us navigate this shift. I know my purpose on this earth is to champion the leaders who are shaping the next era of humanity, and I want to just like let you know that I see you as one of those leaders. I see you stepping into that game, and I and I I cherish the way that you choose to be in the world. I look forward to you going even further on that journey, all right? Thank you. I received that, Niyama, and, and the, it's reciprocal. I see Absolutely. you and I, and I admire you as well. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Zach. We'll end the conversation here. Hey, yo, Niyama here. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet, and then go ahead and leave one of your insights from today's video in the comments below. If you're looking to take this deeper, you can go and watch another video or you can go to niyama.com slash tribe to get exclusive invitation to our tribe member only events. I'll see you soon.